And this is your, of course, your ground clamp. It's got a heavy spring to give you a really good contact on your workpiece. You have copper contacts for the lowest resistance. It's a good heavy duty cable, has a heavy duty end on it. The cable is a good heft to it. It has a very good heft, so it's definitely capable of running full time at 250 amps. And that's another thing about this unit. It's a 250 amp unit, and that's about pushing the maximum amperage that you can get off of single phase power. Once you get above 250 amps, you go into the 300 amp systems. I've seen them all at three phase. Uh, some of the Miller systems will do, and they have a new uh, voltage scaling system where you can go for anywhere from single phase to three phase, but they're very expensive once you get into single to multi phase systems. This is the highest amperage you're going to push on a single phase. So your cables have to be heavy, they've got to be heavy duty. This one will push 250 amps all day. Now this, with the same heavy cable system, this is your stick electrode holder. It's very heavy duty compared to some of them I've seen. It's got to be for your 250 amps of power. It's sort of fashion like your, your Lincoln systems, but very heavy duty. Same high quality, 250 amps. Coming in the, the plasma kit, you have, have a very high quality stainless steel valve. And this is your valve that switches between your two gases since you're running TIG welding, you're running TIG welding and compressed air, you have to have a selector switch between the two. Uh, this is your inline switch that'll switch uh, argon in for welding TIG or switch over to compressed air when you're running the plasma machine. To go along with your gas system you have reinforced uh, polyethylene tubing, and that's for your compressed air and argon input going to your valve. You have a, a kit of parts that goes with the plasma cutter, a little compression gauge showing how much air pressure you have. Now this is interesting, they include an air dryer this air dryer is absolutely necessary to have dry compressed air, otherwise you're going to get poor cuts if you don't have dry air. And you have a little kit of parts. You get extra nozzles for the plasma head. You've got little fittings for your tubing, all kinds of little things like tips and uh, line, line clamps, so it's a good little kit. This is your plasma cutting cable. And it gives you, of course, your plasma cutting torch. And it's got a little guide on it so you don't get too close to your metal. It allows you to, to rest this guide on your metal and the, the guide is there so you don't touch the tip. You don't want to touch the tip on the metal or you, you melt down your tips. And it's got good quality feel to it. It's got your on and off switch up on top. So when you're ready to cut some steel or cut some aluminum, you're ready to go. It's a good heavy duty cable. Again, very heavy duty with power and compressed air going down the cable. This of course is your compressed air hose and then your power, your quick power connect into the system. 
This is your control cable. So when you push the button up here on your torch, it turns the unit on. It's a nice long cable, give you plenty of reach. Now the next thing we want to talk about is the TIG welding capability. And for TIG welding you need a uh, you need a gas. You need a gas which locks out your oxygen. So if you're welding with steel, you'd want either CO2, compressed CO2. If you're welding uh, with aluminum, you have to have pure argon. You can also use a 75-25 mixed gas for welding steel. So if you're TIG welding, you have some rods. This is your filler rod. They sent some aluminum and steel filler rod. That's to get you going practicing on your TIG welding. When you're connecting your bottle of argon or CO2 for welding, you have to have a flow gauge. Now up here you've got the actual PSI of your tank. This little unit down here is your flow gauge. It's got a little little bead in there, floating bead. And when you adjust your gas, you're adjusting for the flow rate, which is anywhere from five cubic feet per hour up to looks like 25 cubic feet per hour, which is the most you're ever going to push for any size metal that you're, you're welding. Normally you want to keep your argon between 15 and 20 cubic feet per minute. That's normal. For your higher amperage you may have to go as high as 25 but definitely no higher than that. So they included of course your regulator, combination regulator and flow gauge. They've included a TIG torch kit and these are the, of course, your, the top of your TIG torch has a spot to put your, your tungsten rod. And this is your tungsten rod here, which is a, it looks like a 330 seconds, which is your general size for welding just about every, anything with TIG. Now, TIG means tungsten inert gas. The tungsten is not supposed to burn in the process. You add the filler metal, but the tungsten only carries the heat to the workpiece. It's not supposed to wear out, but it does. But it's not supposed to get burned up fast either, so uh, with your argon gas covering your, your tungsten and then flowing down, argon is heavier than air, so it floats down and covers your workpiece and locks the oxygen out of the workpiece. You really need that especially with aluminum. Aluminum burns up if you don't have argon. And then included with this kit is you have several nozzles here. And these are your, your cups on the end to contain and direct the argon gas. You have your your nozzle inside of the torch and then of course these are your little uh, stems that hold different sizes of tungsten you have different sizes of, of sleeves up here to you can have anything from a sixteenth of an inch tungsten up to eighth inch or even bigger than that you'll with this system 250 amps you'll use anything from a sixteenth of an inch up to an eighth of an inch maximum and 330 seconds falls right between it for general use in both directions. The TIG torch. You can see this is not a cheap cable at all. It's a high quality cable, high quality sheath on it to protect your cable. And since you're running both argon power and control line, you need a good sheath to protect all of that from sparks and hot stuff. 
So you get two ends to this. We have the torch end, which has a on and off switch. This is your action end where you put your tungsten, the cups, and then you put your little covers back here to cover your tungsten. This is a nice high quality industrial feel to it. It's not a cheap lightweight system. It's very heavy duty. So it'll definitely go the distance on 250 amps for your 85% duty cycle. And most of your lightweight torches do not give you that kind of duty cycle, but this one's designed to, to go a lot farther before it heats up. On the other end you've got a heavy duty connector for power. You have your control connector and your gas connector for argon. Now we measured this cable, it's 15 feet long. We measured all the cables, they're all 15 feet long, heavy duty. Uh, usually in cheap systems you don't get a 15 foot cable, you're lucky if you get 10 or 12 feet at the most, but 15 gives you a good range. You can walk away from your machine and get to just about anything you want to weld. Now, a very important part of the system is this little unit. This is your foot control for TIG. Now, maybe some of you have seen the cheaper systems out there. They have a very cheap kind of a pedal which really works just on the ball of your foot, the tip of your foot. This is the real thing. You have, of course, your adjustments there to adjust the end play of your, your pedal. But what the pedal does is it allows you to change the amperage when you're welding TIG. And it also uh, gives you the the amperage duty cycle controls your upslope, downslope. We'll talk about more, more about that later. But this is the most important part of your TIG system. This allows you to precisely control the amperage going to the torch. So you have to have a good quality pedal to do good quality work. And if your pedal doesn't look like that, I would get something that looks like this because you really need this to really precisely control the heat. And in this kit, Jeff sent us, sent us a, an auto darkening helmet. It's a very lightweight helmet. It should be good for all your modes of welding, whether you're doing stick, TIG, MIG, plasma cutting, it'll do the job. So that pretty much wraps up, yeah, it looks like wrapped up all the accessories.